low acceptability and adoption are some of the core reasons for AI projects to fail. In this video, I will show you seven top causes that make people avoid AI models and how to tackle them. Hi guys, I'm Kevin Fernandez, your AI advisor, and welcome to another AI shot. In this one, we will talk about one of the most common project killers in AI, which is low acceptability and adoption of end users. I'm pretty sure this is not only the case for AI projects and the recommendations I will give you today, you can apply them to any kind of project you have in your company, but these are the ones, the top ones, the seven top ones for AI projects, okay? So we have worked on like hundreds of projects and um, in plenty of them, like we have a huge opportunity for a business to optimize a business, to improve a business. We have like an almost perfect technical solution, you know, like where the model is super accurate at predicting the event we want and it's generating like good revenue in theory. But then, you know, the end person that has to make the call shuts down the project or do not use the project and then there is no impact in the business, okay? And this is super common when the AI is not consisting of a full automation of a business process, but it acts as, a, as an add-on, as empowering a human and decision maker, okay? Uh, and assistant. So when the AI is assisting someone on making better decisions and they just, you know, disregard the AI decisions and just follow their current way of making, uh, of, of working, okay? It's super common in these cases. And let me give you a couple of examples of real life projects where this happened. One was a recommended system for outbound calls, okay? And basically for each for each sales agent, we gave like, we gave them the indication of you need to be selling this thing, okay? This is the best product for this person. Then they started the call and they recommended whatever they felt was the best product for that person disregarding like the AI model and completely ignoring the AI model. A second example was for a project where we were, where we were basically forecasting demand of a certain type of product per market and allocating those that uh, the production to those markets depending on the on the expected demand. And then the, pay, the, the person making the call was just ignoring the model and overriding all the predictions that we were generating. In both cases, we proved that if they follow the, the AI model advice, they will be making more money. So they will be basically generating more profit. In one case, they will be generating more, more sales. In the other one, they will be fulfilling uh, the demand, but people just ignore the model. So why does this happen? Why is it so common in AI projects that people avoid them? I just brought you here the seven most common causes that we have found. And in the description, you will have a link with a bonus PDF with a checklist that you can apply to identify if this is happening to you and how to avoid them, okay? So let's start with the first cause, which is like the most common one that I have seen, which is people saying AI is replacing jobs. And since AI is replacing jobs, they are afraid that their job will be put in risk. So if that happens, they will, you know, um, they will lose uh, the job. And basically, this is one of the most common reasons I, I, I hear from people especially when you are dealing with human tasks, with manual tasks. Okay, so the way I like to present AI projects in these scenarios is the AI here is empowering persons to actually out improve their, their own results, to sell more, to have, you know, um, higher success instead of just, you know, reducing the uh, workforce. Even in all use cases where you are actually trying to enable their work and improving their work, you will read, you will observe this kind of uh, reasoning as the cause for them deciding not to go with the AI. Okay, the second reason I have found very common is people saying AI is just a black box, black box model and I cannot trust a black box model, okay? And this is super common, for example, on high stake domain, like for example in healthcare, where you know you have a doctor and they say I cannot trust a model on the decision that will what will happen with this patient, okay? And I feel like saying that a model is a black box is more an excuse than an actual reason. And it's more a symptom that you are getting this form of resistance rather than an actual reason. Because in us as humans, we are not that interpretable, right? We we cannot understand what the other doctor is thinking and when they are thinking that could be the best course of action for, for this patient. Sometimes some of these processes you will get uh, afraid of it, but some of these processes, if you ask a doctor, they don't actually know why they decided to go on one way or the other. They just thought what's the best uh, reason, okay? so. Saying it's a black box model and typically the response is, well, let's go for explainable AI, but I feel it won't solve the problem because most likely it's just a symptom. It's not the root cause that uh, makes them reject the model. The actual root cause in these cases of having a black box models 
is the third cost is accountability okay and in accountability basically people want to know you know, who is going to be accountable who is going to be responsible for the consequences of this decision that is being automated in one case by an ai instead of by instead of a human so when the doctors say i cannot trust this model because it's a black box it's not about the model being a black box it's because we are keeping the accountability of the model on the human on the doctor okay so here the best thing you need to do is of course play the ethics uh, role like what is the ethical thing here to do what is the regulatory thing that you can uh, to do here and again redefine your social contract your contractual relationship with your client understanding you know what is the trade-off between an automated decision and a human decision and you know being transparent also of who is going to be accountable if sales go lower right if we are in the model and sales go down who is going to be accountable for that will the person actually lose uh, commissions because of it or not okay then we go for the fourth reason which is lack of alignment or optimizing for different goals i have seen this plenty of uh, several times which is basically you know maybe the model is optimizing uh, for example for customer engagement in the long term and the person is optimizing for their next month uh, commissions okay so you have different uh, scopes different time frames that for optimization and there is no alignment between the two you could try to go for a midpoint here but typically going to a midpoint is the worst thing you can do uh, in business so you cannot get everyone involved and everyone satisfied with a midterm because in the end you won't achieve any of the two you won't have long-term profit or short-term profit so what i will suggest here is analyzing which of the extremes you are into it and aligning both the ai and the human factor into that for example we are committed to generating long-term revenue or we are committed to generate low downtime on our factory okay so commit like put all the people in the same room and say we, this is our end goal our compensation plan will be will be aligned with this so make sure everyone is is aligned and work uh, for that extreme that you want to to maximize the fifth one is a different perception of risk or loss okay and in this case uh, you know humans are are not very good at estimating risks okay so we, we are not like rational people okay we are if, if we get presented with two choices we often will uh, go for one that is not uh, as appealing as it should be okay so this is a general problem and it's tricky to make people understand what is the actual risk of something happening and if that happens what will be the loss that you will incur I have a video about uh, risks and how to transform risk into opportunities. I will leave a link. You can use that tool to guide your your people uh, when you are facing this kind of, of uh, resistance. Okay. Then we have the six um, the six uh, common cause for for low acceptability and adoption, which is misconceptions or human biases. For example, the human decision maker says, you know, I have seen this and I'm pretty sure this is the reason because we as humans tend tend to confuse um, correlations with causalities, AI models too. But in general, you know, AI models uh, much have a lot of biases on their own thinking. And uh, when the AI model goes against those biases or those common misconceptions, then you get a lot of resistance from these people from using the AI model. So why is the AI model saying I should sell this here instead of there if I have for 20 years done this in the past and it has worked well? Well, if you if, if you get presented with this option and you go in the smarty pants way of saying, you know, because the machine learning model says so, or because the data says so, in general, you will get more resistance uh, than you had before. So stop trying to prove them they are wrong in their misconceptions and their biases and showing them numbers and, you know, uh, making sure they understand this because in the end, you will end up with more friction. You will end up with higher resistance don't play the smarty pants role here. What I suggest you to do is asking why multi multiple times go. Why do you think that? They will give you a response, which is in general a symptom and it's not the root cause. Ask them why again, why again? So ask them five whys basically. And in the end, they will discover themselves that maybe there is a biased perception and the root cause for, their mis for, for this misunderstanding was more in line with the machine learning model, with the AML. So let them discover themselves why is this uh, happening maybe ask them to investigate themselves these issues so they can discover 
this this problem okay and the seven uh, the seven cause for low acceptability and adoption is bad habits okay so we as humans are habit uh, animals of having habits and we have a certain aversion to change our roles our activities okay so you can actually go for example with incremental transformations and making sure they adjust to it or you can have a more seamless integration of your ai process if you see people are not using the ai because they are just used to a different way of doing things um and again if you like this video so far remember to like and subscribe but let's just give a step back and analyze all of these seven uh, root causes ai replacing jobs black box models accountability lack of alignment different perception of risk and losses uh, misconceptions or human biases and bad habits into two main umbrellas okay which in general will describe all of them uh, which i believe are actual not the symptoms but the root causes for this kind of resistance okay for the first one i will recommend you reading this book flawless consulting okay as data people we are always consultants in our organizations even if you are an internal consultant or an external consultant you are serving another business unit so it's good to have good consulting practices and in this book ways basically the author peter rock talks a lot about resistance okay and about forms of resistance and the best way i have found to destroy most of these uh, forms of resistance in ai is by labeling by saying you know i have i, I feel you are resisting this issue put in a label on it why would you think that's the cause and basically letting the other person talk about it asking it why asking them why they feel this is a case and in the end it's always like a problem of control they feel that the ai is still in control in one of the more most vital components of any business which is decision making so ai is made for automating decision making and if you take decision making out of people's hands they will resist to that because they feel that you are stealing their power okay their control so try to keep the, con the control play balance or even show them how the AI is bringing more control because it's introducing new insights into the way they or operate. Okay, so it's not the stealing their power, but it's actually giving them more tools to make better decisions. Okay, and then it's also a lack of engagement, and that is why in one of our previous videos on who where we say who should be involved in discovery meetings, we typically involve the worldwide uh, the workforce. Okay, then the, the bottom line workforce because they will be the ones that will be engaged with the AI that will need to use the AI. So we want to get them engaged in the whole process and making sure they want to look uh, into it and they want to use it. And then the other book I recommend you for this is Deep okay? Atomic Habits, okay? Because uh, especially for the seven costs, the, the bad habits uh, cost, um, because in, in we, as, as I said, as humans, we are like animals of habits and any habit has like four main components, uh, the cue, the craving, the response, and the reward. And we can basically make people use the AI just by affecting these these four steps of any habit okay so how to promote people to use the AI the first one you can make it obvious right so you can improve your interface your, your UI your UX to favor the AI in their way they operate things you can make it more attractive by creating a good culture of around AI about innovation about technology etc you can make it easy so stop having AI processes that involve extra steps please stop doing that i have seen that a lot like we are you know optimizing all of this but now you need to do all of these five or seven steps so don't do that go for the easy way so go for ai for automation and not necessarily ai for having a better result with seven manual steps okay and in the end make it sat uh, making it satisfying okay what do i mean by making it satisfying in most cases having a compensation plan that is aligned with using the ai so change your commission rates if they follow the AI uh, rules, for example, if you already observe that when they follow the AI, your margins increase, take part of that, of that margin and say, you know what, if you are selling more and your sales are oriented with what the AI is saying, I will give you a plus, a premium on your commission rate. That is a good way to promote people following the AI when you are catching resistance um, on this company. The opposite, how to create the bad habit of going with the manual with a, with a regular with a C situation make it invisible so hide all the all the entry points for the current way of doing the process so if they were used to have a button to subscribe in certain thing remove that and that was the manual process just remove that button okay so hide that from the view 
making it unattractive. That will be the second one, making it difficult. So add some extra steps on the way they do things now and force them to do those steps so that break their pattern for acting, okay? And the last one, making it unsatisfying. For example, no reward in that case. If they don't follow the AI, then there is no compensation, no extra premium on their, on their commission fees. Or for example, that will be a way, okay? So in general, if you want an easy way of creating this kind of engagement is changing your compensation plan, your commission fees, uh, your commission rates. For, for people using the AI. So now tell me in the comments, have you experienced any of these issues? Have you had it bro uh, a project? So have, have you any of your projects failed because of low acceptability and adoption? Tell me in the comments. I hope you liked this video. Remember to like, subscribe, and activate not the notifications. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.